Right now, an investigation is underway to uh, understand what determined the cause of a fire at UW-Madison's engineering hall this morning. Also, the violence in Gaza may be moving south as Israel's defense minister says the next stage of the battle has begun. This is News 3 Now at noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark and Thanks for tuning in. We begin with students and staff evacuating Engineering Hall on the UW-Madison campus due to a fire this morning. A whisk alert sent out at 7.50 a.m. asked the public to avoid the area around the building, which is located at 1415 Engineering Drive. Dane County dispatchers said they were contacted by UW-Madison police at around 7.30 a.m. after a fire alarm in the building activated. The fire was discovered in a room on the fifth floor and was put out. No injuries reported. The building will be closed for the remainder of the day and classes in the building are canceled. Do a lot of drills, so sometimes you kind of hesitate to pack up your stuff because you're like, maybe this will just go off. Last year there was a lot of construction, so the fire alarms were going off a lot. So we were like, oh, I don't know if we should leave. And then we just decided to come over here because we knew Union South wouldn't be that busy at 730 in the morning. So It's unclear if anyone was inside the building when the fire broke out. The Dane County Sheriff's Office is searching for suspects after a home invasion this morning in the town of Burke. Deputies were called to a home in the 6300 block of Arrowhead Trail just before 1.15 after a homeowner said he came face to face with a burglar. The man checked on his family, then walked outside to see three people leave in a white SUV. The keys to the man's vehicle and his home, as well as a garage door opener, were reported stolen. Anyone with information is urged to call the Dane County tip line at 608-284-6900. A teenage girl accused of stabbing another teenager on Madison's north side in January is being charged as an adult. 17-year-old Lanisha Crawford pleaded guilty to a count of first-degree reckless injury. The stabbing happened on North Sherman Avenue. At the time, police said it stemmed from some sort of disturbance at a nearby middle school. A group later met at Warner Park, and that's when the stabbing occurred. Officials say witnesses reported the victim was trying to break up a fight before being stabbed. Trial dates are set for a Mount Horeb man charged with accidentally shooting and killing his friend. Isaiah Miller pleaded not guilty to two separate homicide charges stemming from the May 2022 shooting that killed his friend Marshall Levi Iverson. According to online court documents, Miller's trial is scheduled to begin on July 22nd of next year and is expected to last roughly four days. Let's head out to the weather patio. Meteorologist Jacob Bonasano has looked at your certified most accurate forecast. Cooler, but the sun helps a lot. Yeah, and actually temperatures today are pretty close to average. It's just we've been so abnormally warm the last couple of days. And like you mentioned, we are seeing plenty of sunshine. Current temperatures across Dane County right now in the lower 40s. And that's the case for the most part across our area. Some places are in the middle 40s and some areas are pretty close to the upper 30s. But like I mentioned, this is actually pretty close to the average for this time of the year. But take a look at that temperature change up to 20 degrees colder. Some places at near 25 degrees colder than this time yesterday. Now the good news is that the temperatures are actually going to warm up a bit again for the weekend, although it won't be as warm as it was yesterday. Look at the current wind speeds only up to 10 miles per hour, 15 miles per hour in Janesville. In general, though, the winds are not going to be a huge issue today and they're not going to be at least for Saturday. Could get a little gusty by the time we get to Sunday afternoon. But for this afternoon, we're going to continue to see sunshine. Temperatures will be colder, but the average high this time of year is 44 degrees and we may be above that if not at the very least around that by the time we get to the evening we're gonna see those temperatures dropping into the 30s it actually will stay right around 30 degrees the low temperature tonight will be around midnight it might might warm up a bit towards morning but in general we'll see temperatures right around 30 degrees from around 10 p.m. to sunrise so although the evening is gonna be pretty cold it's not gonna cool down much more after that I'll talk more in detail about your weekend forecast and track our next chance of precipitation coming up a bit later all right we'll check back Jacob thank you legislative Democrats are reintroducing a slate of bills addressing climate change in Wisconsin the forward on climate package addresses issues ranging from supporting sustainable agriculture to the state's transition to green energy. It also includes funding for response and relief to disasters made worse by climate change. The bills were first introduced in 2019. Democrats say none of them got hearings in Republican controlled legislative committees. It's official the federal government will remain open after today. The White House says President Joe Biden has signed a stopgap funding bill. It's the result of intense bargaining and voting in the House and Senate. 
The bill provides tiered funding through January 19th and February 2nd. That means without a deal, the shutdown clock will resume in the new year. New York Congressman George Santos is on the verge again of potential expulsion. This after the House Ethics Committee uncovered substantial evidence that he may have violated federal law. The 56-page document alleges Santos fraudulently exploited every aspect of his House candidacy for his own personal financial profit, claiming he, quote, blatantly stole from his campaign, deceived donors, and reported fictitious loans. There's just so much bad faith activity, um, and the range of it, the scope of it, the boldness of it. Santos has denied any wrongdoing and pleaded not guilty to a 23-count federal indictment this fall. He called the ethics finding, quote, a disgusting politicized smear and a reversal and in a reversal said that he would not be seeking re-election for a second term. If Santos is voted out, he'd be only the sixth member of Congress to have ever been expelled. Violence in Gaza could be expanding as Israel says its offensive against Hamas may move south where most Palestinians have taken refuge. As the hunt for hostages goes on, families and supporters are demanding Israeli officials do whatever it takes to get them home. CBS's Tina Kraus has more. Friday prayers echo across a region reeling from war. Israel's defense minister says the next stage of battle has begun, signaling Israel's offensive in the northern Gaza Strip may move south. That's where Palestinian mother Holu Jarbu is taking refuge and struggling to buy warm clothes for her kids as winter approaches. The war-shattered streets of northern Gaza are empty, and Israel defense forces say they're making progress dismantling Hamas. The IDF showed what it says are Islamic Jihad rockets found at a militant base. And this is what Hamas is trying to hide from you. Israeli troops displayed weapons they say were found at the Al-Shifa hospital complex, which Israel and the U.S. believe Hamas used as a command center. RPGs, AK-47s, we see handcuffs. Other hospitals in Gaza are barely functioning, floors filled with patients, many very young. These are innocent children, this Palestinian man says. They're targeting children who didn't do anything wrong. While in the Israeli city of Modi'in, a heartbroken mother buries her 19-year-old daughter, IDF soldier Noah Marciano, who was found dead in Gaza this week alongside another hostage. As protests go on, Israel's government says it's closer than ever before on a possible deal to bring other captives home. Tina Krause, CBS News, London. And the World Health Organization is calling for a regular flow of patients to be allowed out of Gaza for treatment in Egypt to relieve the pressure on overwhelmed hospitals. Well, there's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. You soon be able to buy your next vehicle from Amazon. Plus, the United Auto Workers ends a month-long strike with Mack Trucks. That's next in the Money Watch Report. You're watching News 3 Now at Noon. Earn a 40-cent high V fuel saver for every $60 you spend. That's right, a 40-cent fuel saver for every $60. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, only at High V. There's never been a better time to buy a new beauty rest from Steinhoffels. Save up to $900 on adjustable base sets. Queen Beauty Rest mattresses start at just $399. Or upgrade to the luxury and comfort of a Beauty Rest Black for only $44 per month when you use Steinhoffels 72 month financing. Plus, get $300 in Steinhoffels cash and a $100 MasterCard rewards card. Shop in store or online at Steinhoffels.com. Relax, it's Steinhoffels. Think all Medicare plans are the same? Think again. A Medicare Advantage plan from Dean Health Plan gives you the benefits you need with premiums as low as $0 a month. Medical, hospital, and prescription drug coverage comes with $0 copays for primary care doctor visits. And extra benefits can help you save even more. Get preventive and comprehensive dental, $250 for eyewear, and $750 for hearing aids. Plus, you can save on over-the-counter health and wellness items. 
All this and a free fitness membership at more than 20,000 locations. Call 1-866-249-1748 now to request your free Dean Health Plan Medicare Advantage Guide. That's 1-866-249-1748. Dean Health Plan, right here with you. Fresh out of Papa Murphy's Kitchen, our delicious pan pizza. Uh, actually, it's fresh out of my oven. Dad, it's just an expression. Thick, crispy, buttery pan pizza? Now that is an expression. Get a large two-topping pan pizza for $11.99. What can our foam do for your home? You'll be warm and comfortable inside, even when it's freezing outside. Your furnace will run less, keeping your heating bills lower. You'll have consistent temperatures throughout the whole house, and those annoying outside noises won't be nearly as loud. Upgrading your insulation upgrades your life. Winterproof now and get 0% financing for 72 months. USA Insulation. hy V hot deals are hotter than hot. Six-pack Pepsi products, $2.99 each when you buy four. Lay's kettle cooked, rolled gold, or munchies, $1.99 each when you buy three. And fresh ground beef, $2.99 for a one-pound roll, only at hy V. If you want to buy a new Hyundai next year, maybe look at Amazon. Under the partnership, consumers will be able to search for their preferred car, make the purchase, and then pick it up at a local dealership or, of course, have it delivered. In 2025, new Hyundai vehicles will also come with Amazon's virtual assistant, Alexa, built in. The United Auto Workers have voted to ratify a new five-year contract with Mack Trucks, bringing a month-long strike to an end. The new deal includes a 36% wage increase. Meanwhile, General Motors may have been the last of the big three U.S. automakers to reach an agreement with the UAW on a new contract, but it's the first to get their deal ratified. The vote was closer than expected, with just over 54% of members voting in favor. And now coffee lovers can get the iconic flavor of an Eggo waffle in their morning cup of joe. Ego and Coffee Mate have collaborated on a new maple syrup coffee creamer that features flavors of toasted waffles, maple syrup, and warm butter. Prices may vary by retailer. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Jared Hill. I lost my appetite there. Chuck Walsh has a new hour. The Dow Industrial is down 11 and a half. The NASDAQ off six and a half. The S&P 500, though, managing a fractional gain. Our call for action volunteers are in the building, taking your consumer complaints and taking action on your behalf. Volunteers are here every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. So you can call for action right now at 608-270-2833 or submit a claim anytime at channel3000.com slash call for action. After the break, we'll take a look at today's ag numbers along with Jacob's weekend forecast. And then today on Live Before, we talk with our auto expert Harvey Briggs and check out some of the highlights he found at the L.A. Auto Show. Quartz takes a different approach to health insurance. We know every life well lived is a journey. And we're here to light the way at every step. That's why for 40 years, we've been alongside the doctors and hospitals who know what their communities need. Because they're a part of them. Because we're a part of them. There's a fire burning in all of us. Let's ignite it together. Quartz, find your spark. Anybody that knows me here knows that I'm always focused on the customer first. I want to make sure that we don't have to worry about this door next year, the year after that. <laughs> I'm not an actor at all. Here at Precision, we're here for you. Precision Door Service, a name you can trust. Score the lowest prices of the year right now at Brothers Main's Black Friday Sale. You won't find lower prices anywhere. And enjoy our free delivery. Shop family-owned Brothers Main's low price guarantee on brands like Whirlpool, Maytag, KitchenAid, and Amana. Feel like family. Brothers Main.
McGann Furniture is closing its doors. The owners are retiring. It's the final weeks of our going out of business sale. Everything in the store must be sold. Storewide markdowns of up to 47%. Plus, we're taking reasonable offers on everything. Make us an offer on quality name brand furniture, including Amish, dining room sets, bedroom sets, recliners, upholstery, and mattresses. Free financing, special sale hours. Hurry in today to the final weeks going out of business sale at McGann Furniture, downtown Baraboo. You'll be glad you did. At Lawton Cates, your life counts is more than just a slogan. It means we're committed to seeking justice for those injured by someone else's negligence. It means standing up to the insurance company, helping you with your medical bills, and getting you fully compensated for lost time at work. Have questions? When you contact Lawton Cates, there's no charge for our initial consultation, and there's never a fee until we deliver the results you deserve. At Lawton Cates, your life counts. Call today. I'm telling you, your country. I'm about to show Blake Shelton how country I can get. That was my hillbilly kicking in. My country, I'm my swag. You're way countryer than I am. I've never ridden a bull. <laughs> on the Jennifer Hudson Show. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. News 3 Now. First Warn Weather is taking you beyond the barometer. Email your weather-related questions to firstwarn at wisctv.com and our team of meteorologists will give you the answers on News 3 Now, live at 4. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Well, Pam Yankee from the Midwest Farm Report out of the radio barn today. She'll be back on Monday, so here are your farm numbers. Inside Natural History Museums, popular exhibits often feature mummies and skeletons. Now, that's starting to change. Michael George shows us how cultural institutions are thinking in a new way about how they display ancient human remains. Mummies, Aztec artifacts made from bones, Mongolian skeletons. For decades, they've illustrated history in America's museums. But now, history is changing. Many top museums are removing displays of human remains. The Smithsonian's Kevin Gover. The vast majority of these were collected without the consent uh, of the person who now sits in a box or a jar uh, in a museum collection. And that's very troubling. Native American communities with ancestors on display have asked museums to reconsider their policies. Gretchen Baker from Pittsburgh's Carnegie Museum of Natural History says it's about treating the remains as human beings. For most visitors, when they start to think about, oh, if, if the remains of my grandfather were on display, yet he nor none of his descendants had consented to that display, how might that make me feel? And the change has led to another question. What happens to the tens of thousands of remains being removed? Some museums, including the American Museum of Natural History, are working to return human remains to the rightful owners. The Smithsonian has created a task force to address the 30,000 remains still in its collection. Officials at Philadelphia's Penn Museum say tracking down the rightful owners of remains thousands of years old is a difficult process. We are listening and paying attention to the wishes of descendant communities. That's the, the whole core of why we do this. Museum directors are working to rethink their exhibits without compromising the visitor experience. Can we still educate people and illustrate history without using human remains? We still can use 
we creations, we can use oral histories. Um, we have wonderful objects that tell lots of stories. Hoping to teach history and right a wrong from history at the same time. Michael George, CBS News, New York. A 1990 federal law requires remains taken from tribal lands to be returned, but there are no laws governing remains taken from private land or other countries. No snow for the deer hunters this weekend, at least here in southern Wisconsin. Jacob? Yeah, but we could see a few snowflakes by the time we get to next week. But this weekend is going to be pretty pleasant. And that's the one of the th three things you need to know. The other thing I want to mention is obviously today is going to be a lot colder. Now, after that slight chance of snow that I mentioned, it's going to be a lot colder. And this will be for Thanksgiving and the weekend after Thanksgiving. So expect some much colder temperatures just around the corner. Now, the good news is that we're not going to see that for the weekend. Now, today is definitely colder than yesterday, but still, like I mentioned earlier in the show, near average. We're going to see plenty of sunshine. Highs will be in the middle to lower 40s. Uh, the winds are not going to be too much of an issue, especially by the time we get to the evening. Tonight, we're going to see low temperatures around 30 degrees. Some areas may stay in the 30s. Others will drop into the upper 20s. Again, a pretty average night considering the time of the year. Now, tomorrow, we are going to see those temperatures rise a bit. Highs will be in the lower 50s. But once again, we're going to see plenty of sunshine and very calm winds. So Definitely, even though it's colder than yesterday, I'd still encourage people to get out and enjoy the weather because uh, just wait a second when I show you the next 10 days. Now, Sunday is also going to be fairly nice. Highs will be in the 50s. Winds are also going to remain calm. Clouds will increase throughout the day, and that will bring a chance of rain and possibly some snow Monday and Tuesday. But take a look at the next 10 days. Now, these are just the high temperatures, and we may see high temperatures below freezing by the time we get to Wednesday. And that looks like it's going to continue through Thanksgiving weekend and even beyond that. So, like I mentioned, enjoy the 50s this weekend. Although they are colder than yesterday, they're certainly going to be warmer than what we're going to see next week. Now, a lot of the reason the temperatures are going to fall is because of that chance of rain and snow. So here's a look at future track. This is Monday afternoon. Could see some showers in the southern portion of the state during the day on Monday, but most of the rain if that will fall will be during the overnight hours. And then by the time we get closer to the morning Tuesday, we're going to see some of that rain transition into snow and we could see some snow showers throughout the day on Tuesday, although we're not expected to see any accumulation and most of this will clear out of the area by Tuesday evening, maybe Tuesday overnight and then we are looking dry beyond Tuesday as we head into Thanksgiving weekend. But we are going to be very cold and Wednesday especially we're going to see those windy conditions. Uh, uh, Thanksgiving will be windy as well, but not as windy as it will be on Wednesday. Now the silver lining with the cold temperatures is that we are expected to see for the most part dry conditions and quite a bit of sunshine. But for those of you that have travel plans, driving isn't going to be an issue unless you uh, have unless you're driving Monday night into Tuesday morning. But like I mentioned, those cold temperatures are going to be a problem. And for those of you that plan on Black Friday shopping on Friday, uh, it's going to be very cold, as you can see. And most of us haven't really dealt with these temperatures in quite a while, so it may feel a bit colder than it actually is. So definitely just prepare to bundle up for your Thanksgiving. Now, at the very least, compared to Halloween, Thanksgiving is more of a holiday you spend indoors. So we're not issuing an alert day because most people are indoors anyway. But nonetheless, it's going to be uh, very cold, and this will continue for next weekend and beyond. There's not really an end in sight to this cold weather. Uh, we kind of also we're going to see the dry weather as well. So as I've said for like maybe the third time though so far, enjoy the weather this weekend because uh, we may not see the temperatures uh, back in the 50s for quite a while. Definitely not going to see them in the 60s for possibly the rest of the year as we saw yesterday. Yeah, probably not. All right, yep. Jacob, thanks for the reality check. There's more to come on News Street Now at Noon. I'm next. Howard is digging deep in the history books for today's recipe in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Today's recipe is inspired by the very first Thanksgiving feast that took place in 1621. It proves that some things never go out of style. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. This right here is confidence in a bottle. Not only does it change you on the outside, but something in the inside, knowing that you're looking better. It makes me feel so much more confident than I've ever felt in my life. They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Well, today we're going to see one for ourselves and let you be the judge. It's called Plexiderm, and lifestyle expert Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says... 
This one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video, and you'll notice the model has bags underneath his eyes and some sagging, and all he uses is a small amount on a clean, dry face, and that's how easy it is. All right, what's the active ingredient? Okay, so it's silicates that are minerals found in shale rock, and what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes in as little as 10 minutes, no prescriptions, and very little effort. Even watching the video, this is a real, uh, it's a model, but it's a real guy with real bags underneath his eyes. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. It feels great. It looks even better. And I did this to my father. We were at home. So we applied it to his under eye bags. And let me tell you, we were so excited. In under 10 minutes, they visibly disappeared from view. And now it is literally part of both of our daily routines. He calls me every single month saying, hey, Annette, I'm out of Plexiderm, please send me more. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. The way you wanna do it is you wanna have a clean, dry face, you use a small amount because it's so powerful. You have high school reunions, you have events you wanna go to, you wanna look years younger, this is it. This Thanksgiving is the best time to try Plexiderm with our starter price of only $14.95. Plus get free shipping. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Every spring, the love of my life came here to paint. Cress helped us make sure she's never forgotten. We are Cress. We truly believe your memories matter. If we were to look back at what was served at the first Thanksgiving in 1621, we'd find a completely different spread than what most of us serve today. Back then, you could count on there being some kind of wild fowl and, of course, something made from corn. But rather than kernel corn, it was in the form of grain, which was likely made into bread or porridge. To make something a little more up-to-date, what do you say we add a corn souffle to this year's Turkey Day lineup? All we do is combine a couple cans of whole kernel corn, or you can use frozen if you prefer, along with some cream corn, a bit of sugar, flour, milk, and a few beaten eggs. After mixing everything together, we pour it into a baking dish and pop it in the oven. This is a whole lot easier than what the pilgrims had to do. Thanks to our supermarket shortcuts, we can throw this together in just minutes. When your souffle is all done and sitting next to all the other holiday go-alongs, get ready for lots of oohs and ahs. It's no wonder that a side dish like this has stood the test of time. To get this easy-peasy recipe for what we call Pilgrim Corn Souffle, check out our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found an updated classic way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm, 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 mm. And here's Jacob now, one final check of the forecast. Thanks, Mark. Let's start with our weather photo of the day. This photo was sent in by Melissa Marie from Argyle, showing some of those fall colors still lingering around, you know, when temperatures are as warm as they have been. That causes those fall colors to last just a bit longer, also showing a very nice reflection off the lake. So thank you, for Mel Melissa, for submitting the photo. You can submit your own weather photo through our app or through the email address you see on screen. I got to be honest, you guys have been awesome with submitting your photos keep them coming. Now here's a look at the seven day forecast once again. Pretty pleasant over the weekend. Chance of rain Monday night into Tuesday and that will really cool things off for next week. Uh, starting Wednesday and continuing all through Thanksgiving weekend, it is going to be a lot colder. Highs will be likely below freezing some days with the lows possibly in the teens for the first time this season. All right, find the warm gear. That's for sure. Thank you, Jacob. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you back here at four o'clock. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.